this is going to be the starting point then. We recently made a poll where we were discussing to talk about the leak of the secret documents uh, from the uh, apparently American sources uh, that are describing the plans of Ukrainian counteroffensive and some other things. Well, I, I it actually took my time studying the documents, studying the impact, listening to the experts, what that have to say, and um, we did a um, we did a little bit of a poll about how do you, do you want to talk to me about this and while majority of people uh, by one specific option said that they want for me to describe every document in like every precise detail going about every number um, majority of people overall chose that I either not talk about documents at all or I talk about them generally so what I'm going to do basically I'm going to talk about documents I'm not going to show it I'm not going to share it but if you're able to find it, then you can kind of follow along what I'm going to be talking about. If you haven't seen the documents, then don't worry. I'm going to describe them to you, uh, what they mean, what they represent, and how are they looking and what's their impact. Let's start talking about them. So uh, some time ago, and we're going to get to the way that they got leaked. So some documents got leaked that apparently are something to do with Ukraine and Ukrainian counteroffensive, and they're kind of sensitive. Um, and to understand what kind of documents got leaked, um, in US, they generally have three gradations that are well known, at least, of uh, secrecy. There are the lowest level of secrecy, which is confidential. Then there is the next one, which is secret. And then there is top secret. The documents that we're going to be talking about today, they have the markings uh, of secret documents. So it's the middle of the two. They're not just confidential for some private eyes or people with access, but actually some containing some of the supposedly secret information. For Ukraine, uh, major parts about Ukrainian documents made up of five uh, paper documents that are representing different aspects about the war situation in Ukraine for a period around the end of February, start of March. These documents are in a paper format and they were taking, uh, they were essentially A3 format papers with uh, pretty pictures and short descriptions uh, about certain stuff on them. And uh, these five documents, uh, of which I'm going to start with the probably most intriguing one and the one that is, that is describing probably the most sensitive stuff for Ukraine, is, is the document on uh, Ukrainian brigades. So the document that we're talking about is... Um, describing the equipment that is needs to be delivered to Ukraine uh, and describes the training time for Ukrainians and describes when that uh, training needs to be completed and uh, what kind of equipment Ukrainians need to receive. The document shows uh, that there are nine brigades for which Western allies and these nine brigades are assault brigades that will be used in Ukrainian counteroffensive. And these nine brigades for which the Western allies are going to supply weapons to, uh, it marks what kind of uh, tanks will be supplied, the main battle tanks, what kind of uh, transportation and infantry fighting vehicles will be supplied to, to these brigades. And it shows which kind of artillery support they will be getting. And uh, beyond that, on one side, so just describing what will be get gotten to this, it also has a gun chart in the middle where it explains the delivery schedule for these brigades together with the training schedule of uh, the brigades. Uh, of the training, it states that uh, Ukrainians need to be uh, that the Western ally, oh, an additional three brigades will would be trained by Ukrainians, but they are outside of uh, outside of this discussion. 
So these then, uh, these then nine brigades that were discussed by Western allies, uh, supposed to be six of them trained by the, the start of April, and another three should be then trained by the end of April, by the 30th of April, essentially suggesting that brigades will be ready with full delivery by the 30th of April. So what's what's really... So from, from, from the first kind of oversight for looking at this, it says, oh my God, it shows like a lot of stuff. I personally know that certain like pieces of equipment making it to certain brigades, I can confirm that that it is accurate, that it is these particular brigades that are getting these pieces of equipment. I have other sources verifying this. So overall, the, the delivery part might be relevant. But what this, this actually shows is actually nothing new because in the equipment sections of what actually going to be delivered to Ukraine, there is literally nothing new. So the only new piece of information from the equipment that we haven't heard before, like publicly stated by uh, sources, is just which brigade are going to get which equipment, which is kind of, it's not nice, but it's not that critical. Like it's not something that is super secret. Then we go into the second question. Well, you know that these brigades are going to receive their equipment and training by the end of April. And, 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 and my question to you is basically asking this question. Did you not know that supposedly the Ukrainian counteroffensive are going to start in May? And we're going to hear that uh, that uh, Ukrainians are going to do their counteroffensive in May because that's when they're going to be ready. And that's where uh, ally equipment is going to make it to Ukraine. And that's when all of the newly formed brigades are going to finish their training. That is not information that was hidden. Like, yes, it is presented in a nice gun chart where like it's like what deliveries from which country, where... But, but it it's not really telling a lot of new stuff. Like it's not a it's not a thing that suddenly twists and turns and like Ukraine everything is exposed. Like you know it's like showing that how they were supposed to utilize these things. It's not. It's not. It just shows that 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 it's 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 pretty nice. Like you know. It just shows that Ukraine is getting about 250 tanks from Western allies in nine brigades, which is about 26 tanks per brigade there. It shows that Ukraine is getting a lot of infantry fighting vehicles, a lot of APCs, but that's it. That's it. Like, it just shows that there is there is just good stuff coming in. And whenever we're talking about these 12 brigades that are mentioned in this document, well, Ukrainian brigade is about four to 5,000 people. So if we just multiply 12 by, you know, 4,000, even taking lower here, what we get is like, what, like 40, 50,000 people? Wasn't these the number of troops that we were talking that Ukraine is preparing for the counteroffensive? It was public knowledge, you know? So the point is that this first document uh is actually showing that what we already know so it's just a nice package for it and the only sensitive information there supposedly is the 30th of april when this chart ends because that says like okay by after 30th of april ukraine is ready to counterattack. but i mean that's not really a secret that's not really a secret then we go to the second document so the second document is uh, something that is named as a daily update that is dated on the 1st of March. And it talks about how much military personnel there is on territory of Ukraine. It talks about uh, how many Western allies, uh, representatives from Europe and US 
are in Ukraine. So it's military personnel that is located on the territory of Ukraine. And from one side, this could expose uh, this whole Russian narrative that you know that it's actually NATO powers that are fighting in Ukraine. It's a leaked document, right? So for example, if your government was hiding from you that it was actually NATO fighting in Ukraine already, we would see that there is a lot of like NATO personnel already in Ukraine, like, you know, thousands and so on, or even like, you know, units there. But what we see that it's literally a couple of tens of people, a couple of dozens of people per country. Well, except US, it has like just over a hundred, I believe, of people that are located from their militaries inside the territory of Ukraine. And those are most probably either instructors or technical advisors to specific equipment or whatnot, or, or logistics supporters. So the, the fact that this document is leaked is actually not sabotaging literally Ukrainian kind of uh, setup, but it's a more sabotaging the Russian propaganda narrative that uh, there are already NATO forces fighting in Ukraine. And, and I know it's a joke, like, don't get me wrong. So that by itself makes this document leaked hilarious for me because it works more in favor of Ukraine the, and saying that the Western allies actually don't have the powers there. It's Ukraine that is fighting on its own. Then we go into the third document. And third document is, um, as someone essentially expressed this, is basically a snapshot of the deep state map, the map that I'm showing on every second video of mine, the map that you're seeing essentially every day on Dennis's Davidov's video or reporting from Ukraine video or any other bunch of guys that are covering video updates on the map. There are literally just a map describing what Ukrainian and Russian forces there are present. It says that uh, also how many... Uh, Russian uh, battalions are right. It's all counted in battalions. Uh, how many essentially? A battalion is like 500,000, 500 uh, people, I believe. So, and it's uh, basically describes the Russian forces that are fighting on there. It says, like, there's the 91 battalion that are fighting right now for the city of Bakhmut and so on for this western, uh, eastern area. And that uh, 32 battalions are right now battle capable, 11 not battle capable, and whatnot. And then breaks down also what it is. So this, this document describing those battalions that are both on Russian and Ukrainian side there, it's military intelligence 101. It's just force assessment. It doesn't like, you know, go in depth into their weaknesses or like what is there and so on. There is nothing particularly secret there. There is nothing that has been not discussed before. It's just like you open a deep state map, you're gonna see exactly the same thing, except online. And more importantly, some of the OSINT, uh, like uh, open source intelligence providers on Twitter, they have better maps than the one that was presented on this particular picture. Because on this particular picture, it just talked in general how many forces Russia has on this, on this particular direction. But there is uh, open source intelligence where they list every single battalion with a name, who is the commander, and who are, where are the forces from, and a lot more details. So... We have open source information for what is represented on this secret document. Then we go into the fourth document. And remember, there are total fives that were very, very sensitive for the Ukrainians. The fourth document describes Russia-Ukraine status of a conflict. It's just a bunch of, of numbers and statistics that are compared to each other. So first number here is the one the number that describes that Russia has in total 544 battalions in total all of their Russian forces of which 527 battalions are engaged on territory uh, are engaged with a conflict on Ukraine 
and 474 battalions are right now located on territory of Ukraine. So now you heard battalion, 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 battalion. What does it mean? Well, it means that Russia has about 170,000 of forces that are located on territory of Ukraine. They have some reserves on territory of Russia. And the most important thing, Russia has engaged 97% of their, their forces. I wonder if you have heard the number Russia has engaged 97% somewhere before. And I'm going to hint you, it was the Pentagon briefing. It was the Pentagon briefing where they said that Russia has engaged 97% of their total army into the conflict with Ukraine. We just get a little bit more detailed breakdown. That's it. That's all we get with these numbers. That's all we get. Just a little bit more breakdown about what's the composition of it. You say, okay, but like if it's 170,000 of Russian forces that are in territory of Ukraine, didn't Russia mobilize? Like where are the rest? Well, firstly, that. Secondly, a lot of what mobilized, got mo well, a lot of people that got mobilized got mobilized into logistics because for every fighter that you get, Russia also needs to supply them logistically. So and to supply them logistically, they need to people to supply them logistics. So a lot of mobilized troops are actually went to supporting regiments. So just, just to kind of keep track of it. And also about the casualties of the mobilized people, uh, watch, go watch uh, Anna Spak Nielsen's uh, latest video about casualties of Russia. That's, that's important. Then we go into another number that is found on this on this document. And here we get into a situation where it's the most, most disputed number ever. Because here we talk about um, a number that's been proven to be picked up. And we're going to talk about this picked up by the Russian propagandists. And it was tampered with. So there are versions of this document where essentially it says that Ukraine lost like around 15, 16 uh, that Russia lost about 15, 16 uh, thousands, and Ukraine lost about 70 to 80 thousand troops killed in action. And I believe I got myself a hand on a document that was not edited. But please note that this particular box that we're talking about, it's called, it's called total assessed losses. So if you'll see this document, so in total assessed losses, there has been proven multiple copies of this uh, leak where it had numbers of casualties tampered with uh, tampered with and it has been proven so the numbers that i'm having here is that russian losses are 35 and a half thousand dead to 43 and a half thousand dead and you say wow that's that's super low number that's super low number. Well, firstly, it doesn't describe methodology. If it counts only Russian combatants, if it counts Donetsk, if it counts Wagner or not, because a lot of those, like, technically are not uh, Russian, Russian military. Maybe it counts only the Russian military. But if it's not, like, if it's 40,000, let's say in between number, if it's 40,000 dead, you know, there is a rule of thumb saying that for every dead person, you have two additional wounded. So if we have 40,000 dead, and then we have two more, so it's 40,000, then it's 80,000, and then it's 120,000 casualties. By any chance, have you heard about a month ago at the start of May, at the start of March, that there were some sources talking that Russian casualties are approximately 120,000 right now in Ukraine. Just a hint. Just a hint. So we just might be looking at the same numbers that were already told to us. We just see them just in a little bit more detail. But more importantly, I, I actually am calling a little bit on BS on these numbers because the box that I'm looking at in my document, again, maybe I also have the version that was tampered this. And it says here for Russians, like on the third line for Russians, it says there are 6,004 ground vehicles destroyed for Russia. 
uh, sorry, not destroyed. It says losses. So 6,004 losses for ground vehicles for Russia. And I'm calling BS. Why? Because this is a state of conflict of the map that I'm looking at on the 1st of March, supposedly. And right now is the start of April. And just recently, if you haven't heard, there is a uh, uh, project that's called Oryx. And what they do, they count actual destroyed vehicles with photo evidence. So whatever is there with photo evidence, they are counting it. So if this secret document is saying that on the 1st of March, Russian have lost 6,004 vehicles, and Oryx now, at the start of April, just said that they counted on visually confirmed over 10,000 burned vehicles. So either Ukraine in a month burned and destroyed and captured over 4,000 vehicles, or there is something is wrong with this, with this data that is reported. Because remember, we all know that not everything gets onto the, onto the videos from what was destroyed, especially on the vehicles. We know that for sure. So the number should be more bigger than what's visually confirmed. And we see here that it's described in this top secret document that number is ludicrously lower than what is actually visually confirmed. So that is something for you to consider about the validity of these documents. And then we go into, into oh, and you might say, oh, maybe this is destroyed. And, 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 and actually, like, you know, there is a lot of captured ones. So maybe there is a lot of captured. No, no, no. Oryx reported that it was 2,834 vehicles that were captured. So it's, it's even like if you just remove the captured, it's still a huge difference. It's still a huge difference. It's, it's, it's enormous. Like you cannot just do it in just one month. So then the fifth document, and please don't laugh, but I'm just basically going to ask you not to laugh. So fifth document is named ground, uh, uh, it says freeze, but it says like ground freeze, like I'm just putting it in. So ground freeze for favorable maneuverability, the document is called. And so this document discusses on essentially historically on which months and which which parts of the map in Ukraine in what time period the ground is frozen enough for maneuvers by vehicles or the ground is dry enough for maneuvers of vehicles to put in a simpler words it's a weather report it's it's a weather report it just says like when it's usually dry, when it's usually cold. That, that's it. That's the whole secret document. It's just packaged nicely and so on. That's the whole report. So in a dry exit of this five supposedly damning documents, we have description of what vehicles to which assault brigade not nice, but again, not something that a person that follows the news would not know. And majority of it should be known by intelligence. If it doesn't know, then it's it's not an intelligence. It's just a clown show. And then the rest of the documents literally doesn't say much more than what uh, open source intelligence has been saying. So the question is, is like, if this is the best of the league that you can get, are you sure it's good? And then people say, it's like, oh, wait, but there was like another, like a lot of documents that were leaked. Well, it's good that you asked because I looked in those as well. And, and, and these documents, they are not really covering a lot of uncommon things. They are essentially a CIA documents that are representing assessment on the ground on the on the what's happening like essentially what's happening in society you know how society is reacting to certain things it's uh, assessment of where was for example sp specific russian missiles hit what kind of damage they did what kind of assessment you know it's not even analysis it's just reports on events it's glorified news it's glorified news that is just reported by secret channels because it's like, you know, it's not for, for total media. 
And then there's also like some probing into like how Wagner were negotiating in Turkey to buy some weapons. There is also reports, again, reports on news about how Russian uh, intelligence and what they're planning to do uh, inside of Africa. That's what are being what's being discussed in other documents. And also for other countries, there's also China there, but it's like the same principle applies. It's just like it, what intelligence does, it just finds news, it finds, you know, like sources of information of what's happening in a country and then sends it over to analysts and then analysts analyze to present a picture to command to make decisions. This was not decisions. This is just assessment of the situation on a particular event on a case. That was what in the other documents. That, that's it. That's the leak. So what I want you to say is that some time ago I wrote a post about the Chinese peace plan. And you know what I wrote here is that, that it's not a plan because for anything to be considered a plan, it needs to follow a certain structure. It needs to follow some certain goals, some kind of like directions. These documents are nothing more than observations. Like the most sensitive one is, is saying basically, oh, it's going to be 30th April when deliveries are ending, which was saying by everyone. So watch my channel, watch my every video. I'm telling you Ukraine is going to attack in May. So secrecy is questionable. And we, here we get into discussion about has it been done on purpose? Are they secret or not? Uh, firstly, let's talk about are they secret or not? And my belief is they are. Because the... Uh, though, though, first, before that, actually, I want to talk about uh, something else. So, first one says, like, oh, maybe it was a special operation by, by uh, you know, United States to release them to essentially confuse Russian military and so on. And my answer to that is very short. I do not feel like the ends justify the means because what was hap what's happened at the end is that these documents released, they do make a lot of fuzz, but they don't really, you know, present any plans. They don't really present any kind of information that would deter Russia from something that it didn't know. If Russia didn't know what was inside documents, like for example, when ground freezes, what is it doing? What, what, what are you talking about? So there is nothing in there that would essentially sabotage Russia. On the contrary, right now there is a huge investigation inside of uh, uh, American intelligence services. There is also probes, as I believe, like maybe in Congress, there is discussion. So there is a lot of internal fuzz about like how did these made it out. There is a lot of discussion about it. So this creates a lot of headache. And believe me when I tell you that a lot of bureaucrats, especially working on these positions, they do not want to deal with this headache with probes, investigations, whatnot. They just want to do their job. So I do not believe that they were released on purpose because they're not really achieving anything because the contents of them are so irrelevant. Then we talk into, uh, are they real or not? And I believe real because A, the investigation, that's why I jumped the point, because it really created a lot of investigation. So now what? The president that allowed this special operation to happen is now need to go to every investigating Congress and explain, hey, hey, guys, uh, sorry that I did it like it was supposed to confuse Russians, but like, just trust me, trust me. It's like, it's for the good cause. It's election year that is coming. That would not be a smart way to do. Like putting yourself on a spotlight during election year, not, not smart, not smart. So I don't believe that is. And then secondly, uh, how do we know if it's like, if it's real or not? So uh, all of the secret documents, they have, a very simple kind of rules about. So they have formatting, fonts, colors, like where, for example, the confidentiality should be stated, where additional information, where they should be stated, in what font, in what color, in what size. 
So this is done and this alternates during certain periods for a lot of documents. This is done exactly so, for example, if documents are leaked that are referring to specific information, they can be easily identified that these are fakes. So to get documents to be released that are looking like real documents and are treated like real documents and not just being dismissed as fakes, then at that moment, they would need to be presented with a very specific case of document formatting, of document design and everything. It's a very simple method, but it's very, very effective. So with the, fa with the fact that there is a fuzz about these documents inside of uh, US intelligence community right now, and we get a lot of reports that is happening, I do not believe that they're fake. I do believe that th these documents are actually true. And here I want to make a point that because documents don't really show anything out of the ordinary, it's basically just an information update. To be honest, to go and bother like forging these documents and trying to find what is the current format for the American documents just so you can forge them, really, really a lot of effort for a very little, for a very, very little situation. Then the next one, if it's a leak, could it be done by, for example, Russian intelligence? Well, for Russian intelligence, firstly, why would you leak it for public? Like if it's a secretive information, get it for yourself. Because if it's a leak, then documents have associated people with them. Because there is quite a lot of documents that are covering quite a wider topic, one can just basically when diagram and find the number of people that needed to be interrogated to find out who of them are, are essentially leaking all of these documents because not all of the people have access to all of the documents. And that means that a lot of those things that were leaked because they're so, I mean, like they're, they're doing a little bit of a fuss, yes, but what's the impact? Like there is almost no impact there because almost no secret information has been leaked. Like I think the most impactful uh, supposedly that would be is like, is that, oh, did you know that US is spying on Ukraine? It was like, oh, no shit, Sherlock. U US has been spying on everyone. That's, that's just like intelligence 101. It's, it's a little bit silly to consider that if Russia has an agent in this level of, of security, it's getting to secret access, they would just leak it them to the public for lulls, especially when we start getting into discussion how they got leaked. And then finally we go into that discussion is how they, they got leaked. Because the documents themselves actually were, were not were not leaked just recently they appeared and and now please don't laugh so now they first appeared on a discord server by the way join discord <laughs> on a discord server for minecraft minecraft is a computer game for kids well okay it's not for kids never mind don't, don't worry the nuances here the point is it's a somewhat silly computer game where they randomly leaked a bunch of these secret documents and these documents were not picked up for almost a month for like and i believe the person that leaked them on that discord server uh his nickname was uh oh my god uh, i have it somewhere never mind don't, don't worry I'll, I'll find it uh but yes so they were on that server oh Vau Mao. Vau Mao was the name of the person that posted these. So after about a month, these documents got posted on 4chan, an image board, an anonymous image board, which is known for weird stuff, but like leaks are possible. And then after that, the Russian third grade propaganda channel that was called A Woman from Donbass found these documents on 4chan downloaded them that's when supposedly the editing happened about the number of troops casualties and from there that's when they started spreading it's ludicrously hilarious how poor this is 
So if it's a special operation where someone on the Minecrafts, not WikiLeaks, not to some journalism, but on a Minecraft server of Discord posts some secret intelligence, then they need to go to 4chan in a month. And then, like, they need a third grade Russian troll, like, not troll, but like a propagandist to pick them up. It's, it's just stupid. So, I, my personal opinion on all this situation, let's kind of sum it up. So this is not a plan. It never was a plan. It provides little to no information about Ukraine with some very minor sensitive things that supposedly the enemy intelligence should know anyway. If it doesn't know, then it's not doing their job. And we do know that Russian intelligence works eh, more or less. <laughs> it's, a, it's a debatable question. But still... Uh, so these documents, they do not really provide any kind of advantage beyond the hype factor. The question, the ways that they've been leaked is questionable. And their authenticity is pretty much more or less confirmed. So my bet, personal bet, and this is just my opinion right now, is that there was some guy that decided to leak it. So he just posted it, but no one cared. And then someone, like, you know, a month later is like, oh, this is cool. Let me repost it to 4chan. Then repost it from 4chan. And then it's just by the chain of accidents, somehow ended up. We know this precedent before, like uh, when documents about certain development uh, equipment has been posted on like forums of, uh, of uh, some tank games. This has happened before. But the point is, this story is stupid. <laughs> There is nothing in these documents that are extremely sensitive. Obviously, it's a big problem for internals, like because leaking documents is not cool, especially secret ones. Because if you're going to leak a secret document, can you actually link some, leak something that matters? And that's what I have to say to you about these secret documents. And I'm going to cut here for the 